testing audio, testing video, testing, uh, turning off the banner. Uh, hello and welcome to the stream. Um, we're going to continue with Julia today and try to see if we can uh, do something interesting with Julia, although um, I think we've kind of done the interesting part, so I'm kind of tempted to move on because uh, I don't really, really like completing projects. Um, either that or we could go in a totally different direction here um, and instead of using uh, you know hard-coded numbers, quote-unquote, we could have a server API connection, which is actually more flexible because it lets me do more things with the server, but means the the um, the app the application won't be self-contained. It, it will require a server connection, and even if I <coughs> excuse me, I feel that um, I would have to maintain that server connection, uh, which could be difficult. Now, I would like to start out today by uh, you know um, asking a question that I've asked myself many times. Um, could I be doing something else? I don't mean could I be streaming something else uh, because I've done that and that's not the point. Could I be doing something to help with the problems our country is having? Uh, particularly with uh, police brutality and racism. I don't think COVID is such a serious issue. Um, and honestly, I don't know. I mean, it feels like this is a waste of time. This is a distraction. Certainly no one's listening to me pretty much. Um, but that's not really the point, even if people, well, I guess even if people were listening to me, it would be a little bit more useful, um, but it is not very useful. So I do want to make the statement that I'm totally aware that uh, this seems like a waste of my time, uh, which it is, uh, but my, my policy for a very long time has been that life is a waste of time. So it's not so much that doing this is good, it's just that there's really nothing realistically better than uh, that I could be doing at this, at this point in time. Um, but that doesn't mean that I, I'm not sympathetic, that I don't care, because I do. Um, I think a lot of other streamers and a lot of TV shows, and I'm not one of them, I'm not famous, no one's listening to me, um, but if just on the off chance someone does listen to me someday, I just want to say that, uh, no, I'm not ignoring this issue. I am, I am very deeply concerned with this issue. I am very saddened uh, by police brutality and racism in our country, and I, and I think Hopefully this might be the wake-up call, although the wake-up call could have been from Selma, Alabama in the 50s. It could, have been, it could have been from Rodney King. It could have been from any one of the dozens of maybe hundreds or even thousands of police brutality incidents uh, in the United States. Um, but maybe it looks like this time people are not willing to forget, and that is important. Um, gonna have to come down from that one a little bit because it is serious. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to to soft soap it. It is very serious. Um, but again, I am not doing this because I'm trying to ignore the issue. Well, it is, I mean, I am trying to work so I don't have to think about it constantly. But that doesn't mean I'm not aware of it. It doesn't mean that I um, that I don't think it's an important issue. And certainly, if someone can suggest that I should be doing something else that can really be helpful. Uh, either on stream or off stream, please do suggest that to me uh, either here or there's panels below that will tell you other ways to contact me. Um, so please, please do that. I am not, um, I am not kind of trying to whitewash anything. I am not trying to say that I don't care. It's just that, and I, and I fully admit this stream is for me to forget. It is because I cannot think of things like that 24 hours a day or even 16 hours a day because it would drive me crazy and not in a useful way, not in crazy that I would actually do something dramatic that would help. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is something I really wanted to say. Uh, I've wanted to say that since I b started streaming because uh, even back then there were, there's always a lot of problems in the world. There, there, there always are, but, but I just get the feeling that maybe this time I want to say, um, yes, I, I am aware this is not, uh, this is, it seems trivial. It seems like I'm. F it seems frivolous, and it is. Um, but it is not frivolous or trivial because uh, I am not aware that there are more serious issues. It is frivolous and trivial, uh, basically, to distract me from the uh, from the serious issues, at least part of the time. Not all of the time. You, you want to think about these things, uh, but every so often, um, you just you just really need to sort of. Defocus temporarily, but 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 not 
but don't forget don't forget okay so today we're going to be looking at uh, Julia again and we're going to uh, continue to work on our project uh, to create a um, to create a spline not splines but approximations of a, of a function uh, using uh, multiple polynomials or piecewise polynomials, uh, which is similar to what NASA does. They use a Chebyshev or Hermite polynomials. We're using the base polynomials, 1x, x squared, so on. It's literally the same thing, um, just a different approach to the same thing. So um, yesterday I started uh, breaking stuff up into, um, into uh, files because we do want to use Julia more often. Um, and today, you know what I think I'm actually going to do, just to piss people off. Um, yeah, in fact, I think I will do this. Um, interpolate. Okay, hang on. That might be... Mm. Okay, let's actually do this. Um, yes, we are going back into Maxima. What I'd like to do here is explain the theory of regression. Um, Let's see, are there comments in there? Must be, right? Comments in... I don't know what they are, but... Um, wow. Uh, okay. I, I'm sure there are comments. I mean, I, I, there might not be multi-line comments, but although I think there are actually maxima. Um, Come on, baby needs a new set of comments. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, and we're going to talk about how does regression work. What is the uh, what is linear regression, and you know how do we use polynomials to estimate things? Now, um, what's interesting is even though I'm about to talk about this, I don't know what I'm doing. I have not done this before, uh, so there's a good chance I'll screw it up. So it will be a waste of your time to watch this. Uh, which is pretty much my guarantee. So let's go ahead and bring up our maxima. Now, the, the idea behind regression is pretty simple. We have a uh, polynomial. Let's say, in this case, we're going to start slow with a second-degree polynomial. Um, so we're basically going to start with... Um, I don't even know if some will work now, because I just... I'm really bad at this. Okay. So let me see if I can do a sum of this, if that does what I want. No, okay, so some... Oh, actually, hang on. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, good, so this is actually going to be fucking me over because... Uh, oh, here it is, 30. Um, okay, this is actually fine. Um, so what we want here is sum A of I times X to the I, where I goes from 0 to 2. Hopefully that will work. Right, so that's a very simple, uh, this is a very generic uh, second degree polynomial because we haven't defined A uh, yet. It's not even a function. You should read these as subscripts. So now the question is, um, and actually I think we can actually assign this to f of x. And I'm pretty sure that for a function assignment you have to do it this way. Uh, let's make sure that's correct. f of 5. Uh, and that that is correct. That is what f of five would be. So the question is, how do we um, how do we minimize? So now presumably there's some y of zero that we're trying to estimate. Uh, so when we put in f of x zero, we get this, and we're trying to estimate y zero, uh, the output function. Now for just one variable, it is Pomodoro time. It's the first one, so we're going to skip it. Um, so for the first, it's actually easy to do if you have fewer than three points because you can come up with an exact approximation. Um, so let's do it a little bit more um, generically. So f of x of n, and n, there's a finite number of xi we're trying to do. That's what that is. Minus y of n. And what we really kind of want is the absolute value of this difference. Uh, we want to know, because we don't want necessarily a plus 5 error to cancel out with a minus 5 error. Uh, so one way to do that is to use absolute values. In the case we're doing, we actually want the maximum error. We want to know what the maximum difference is between the x's and the y's, uh, which is different. Um, so the question is, what is the uh, what is the total difference 
the maximum of the absolute value of the differences. So let's let's actually go ahead and write out our expression here. So this is the value that we're measuring for a given n. Um, and what we want to do, um, actually I should say, sorry, 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 sorry. Let's say for a given i, because n is going to be my number of, uh, uh, is going to be the number of uh, variables, number of points that we have. So this is, this is what it is for one, um, for one, um, wait, 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 wait. Hang on one second, I have a concern. f of x is this. f of x of i is, this might be the wrong way to do it. Um, okay, so that doesn't work. Uh, let me make sure this is generic and it works for f of y. Okay, which it does. Uh, apparently I cannot say, um, what if I say y of 5? That yeah, that doesn't actually do what I want, so hang on one second. I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work because x is not... Hmm... That actually did work. Hang on. Well, that is actually what I want, uh, x2, so that... Apparently you can declare... Again, we're switching between Maxima and Julia a lot, uh, so this is uh, a little bit confusing. Um, so can I say, the problem I think is I might already be bound, which is not a good thing, because, um, let's see, no, that should be fine. So if I say x of j, is this giving me, oh, that is correct. What if I say x of i, now is that going to work? Okay, for some reason, x of i is getting messed up, which is really, really, unless it's t treating i like, no. Hmm. That is strange. No, oh, we'll call it J. Not a problem. All right. So this is uh, this is what the uh, the value of the guess function is uh, at x of j at, at the jth point. The difference is this. This is the difference between the actual value and the estimated value. Um, because we want the absolute value of that, we have this, which by the way is going to be a nightmare to compute. And so what we actually want is. Um, Let's see. Of this, as j goes from 1 to n. I don't know if it's going to be, yeah. Um, that, unfortunately, is not going to work because n is not defined. But we can do it from 10. Unfortunately, it turns out, and we want the max of this. So actually, this is the value we're seeking. And, and I'm just mentioning it purely for, uh, uh, for stupid reasons. Purely for stupidity. Because we're not going to be able to compute. This value is like way too hard to figure out when you have a lot of points. Uh, you basically want to find the values of a0, a1, and a2 that makes this value minimal. Um, but we're not going to do that because it's difficult. Now slightly better than using the absolute value is using the square function because absolute value has some weird derivatives. It is differentiable at all points but zero, but if we're going to use the derivative method um, to find minimums, we really want to be using uh, squares and not absolute values, and th there is a controversy about that. Uh, but, um, but unfortunately, it's just so much easier to do this. Um, so we, we're going to do this, and we can say make list. I guess we could even say sum. Oh no, I'm sorry, because we're still looking. So what we actually want is the max. Our second guess is going to be we want the max of these values over all 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 of the j's. Let's go ahead and write it down. Um, um, let's see, of this, as j goes from 1, we have to kind of set a limit here because this is not, nope, what? Oh, yeah, hang on, f of x of j minus j, whole thing squared, there. Yeah, um, so I'll go ahead and, go ahead and write this down. Um, unfortunately, again, we're not going to be able to use it. Oh, I'm sorry, actually what we want is the maximum of this error, so we want this. Uh, doesn't help because it's not going to work. Um, so what we usually end up settling for in these things is we, we look at the sum of the squares. Not the maximum, but the sum, and we try to minimize that sum. 
Um, kind of get the feeling I've explained this on stream before, but I don't watch my streams, so I don't know. Um, although I really should index them at some point. Okay, so what we're looking for here is we're still going to have the same make list. Um, actually, we can replace it. Okay, so these are the individual terms. Uh, I keep forgetting semicolon here, not in, in Julia. I'm going to go nuts doing this. Um, so we want the sum of this, and again, we have to go from j to 1 to 10, but it's really j1 to an arbitrary uh, number. So the question is, can we minimize this value? How do we minimize, how do we choose a1, a2, and a0 to minimize this value, the sum of the differences of the squares? Sum of the square of the differences from the actual values. Now this is where we can actually do some linear regression. So let's call this, um, yeah, let's call this, Again, this is just sort of for instructional purposes, um, because you know we're not really going to. Obviously, diff is actually a function of everything here. Um, so this is the difference. This is now the question is how do we find the minimum? Well, we can use some calculus here. Uh, we can use oh shit! Did I actually just name something after a built-in? I did. Um, I literally used diff. Very bad of me. Sorry. So we're going to call this uh, the r squared mean. That's not actually what I want, though. Um, that's not the r squared mean estimator. This is the sum of the square of the differences, SSD, which is also kind of dry, by the way. Um, yeah. So that that was just a terrible decision on my part for naming. Okay. So now we can we can actually do some calculus on this sucker. Um, and again, 10 is generic, and, and look to see whether we can set the derivative equal to zero. Actually, we might even be able to say minimize SSD with respect to, I don't know if that's, this is going to work. Um, no, but we can do a differential. So we can take the diff of this with respect to A0. Um, boy, I hope that worked, because I have no idea if that's correct. Well, let's, let's, let's again look at one term here um, right, so this is this is one term of the difference let's see if I can if I diff this by you know what I want to expand this out actually I mean I, it's actually probably a bad idea to expand it out but this shows you how the uh, I want to see where the a0 term is so it's here and it's here and it's here so this should make it clearer hopefully Obviously, it doesn't matter whether you the differentiation occurs before or after uh, you do the square rooting part. Okay, so this is uh, the derivative with respect to a0. Most of the terms do drop out. Uh, we have here um, two y j. That's going to drop out. This is going to be two four a two. I'm sorry. We're, sorry, we're differentiating with respect to a0, not with respect to x or y. Um, so this is going to be, uh, this is going to be a term here. Um, I, I, this looks correct enough to me that I'm, I'm satisfied. There should be a minus two Y in here somewhere. And there it is. Um, okay. So now we could actually just sum up these terms because derivatives are linear. Uh, but I, I'm comfortable that, um, I'm comfortable that this is also accurate. The, the, the differential, I'm convinced that it's, it's doing this correctly. So now all we really, all we need to do is solve a zero is, uh, this is the different, different, dif the derivative. Now what if we set the derivative with respect, what if we solve this derivative equal to zero and have a zero, I don't know if this is gonna work, um, as the, yeah, there we go. So as you can see here, it, of course, it depends on other a1 and a0 as well. Uh, why am I doing a0? Yikes. Did I mean to do the a2 first? Okay. Um, okay. This is actually not what I meant to do. Um, it's interesting though. Basically what we're going to have here is because we know that the y10, x10, and so forth are numbers, we're going to end up with three equations um, in a0, a1, and a2. Um, so now what I'm going to do now is um, I'm 
tempted to assign uh, the x0 values, um, the xi values to be real numbers and yi to be real numbers. So we could see what this looks like. With everything here is going to dissolve to a number except for a0, a1, and a2. So what we're actually doing is we end up solving this matrix of, or, or three uh, you know, differential equations. Nope, sorry, three linear equations, which is the key, is that we're actually solving linear equations, not differential equations. Um, and that, that's very simple to do. That's very simple and very fast to do. So that would be the uh, sort of, um, that would be sort of the idea behind polynomial interpolation. Uh, that, that's how we uh, minimize the sum of the squares. Or, and of course, we can do this for any degree of, uh, of uh, polynomial. Uh, because again, we're going to end up basically with uh, n, different, uh, n linear equations uh, where n is, the, uh, one, uh, is approximately the degree of the polynomial. In this case, we have three equations, and the highest degree, the degree is 2. So it's degree plus 1, because we need to have a constant term in there. Um, now, there are other things we could do here. We could, in theory, have negative exponents for x. We could be looking at 1 over x. The problem with 1 over x, of course, is it tends to blow up your 0. And, um, and that, that means we'll actually, well, uh, actually, I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know. It might, it might actually work better. I've never actually, now that I think about it, I've never actually tried using uh, negative exponents. And of course, we could do it with other uh, things as well. But then it gets more complicated, because then the equations are no longer linear. Uh, if we do things like log, for example, I don't think the ex uh, We looked at this earlier, I think. And the, 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 for log, it's not linear. For exponential, it's not linear. A lot of stuff like that. So that was our little lesson, if you can call it that, on um, let's see. Uh, our little lesson there on linear regression. So now we're going to go over here to read me, but I think, oh shit, please tell me there is nothing. Um, I'm going to pretend they're the same. They're the same length, so I don't think there's a problem. Okay, so now we're actually going to move out of the sort of README uh, format and actually move into an actual, you know, an actual program. Uh, bcinterpolation.jl. Um, I'm going to try to mimic what I have for, uh, what I did for um, Maxima. So with Maxima, what happens is it creates a mini file uh, the alias creates a mini file and then loads Maxima with that mini file, but still brings it into terminal mode. So for Julia, we kind of want to do that, and our formulas here are going to be uh, we're going to use load inside of load, which is actually I'm okay with that. And this we might actually get rid of if it's taking too long. And the semicolon here, I forget, it's not necessary. It actually, yeah, we don't want it because it actually suppresses the output, and we kind of want to see what's going on. At least early on. I also want to go ahead and move over these functions that we created, which we might actually make, um, uh, you know, more generic later on. Okay, so this is. Uh, okay, I'm tempted to actually move this into uh, bclib. So let, let me actually see what we can do here, which might be a bad idea if I decide not to load bclib every time. That that, that could be a bad thing. Um, okay, let's see what is Julia's Julia. If there's something called Julia doc. Because I do want to kind of do this the right way. Um, yep, of course there is. Um, ooh. Well, that's not good. So that's that's past tense. Um, okay, what doesn't Julia do well? Um... Okay. Okay. I don't know if I, my dog needs contact lenses. Okay. Let's just look at Julia comment. Usually, um, what you do is you use the multi-line comment. Com okay. Good. So it's dollar sign equal, and um, usually what you would do is dollar sign equal equal to be like uh, documentation. That's the sort of standard in these languages. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, 
God, I used to know how to do this really well for, like, Pearl. Um, I, I shouldn't say that. But let's take a look at my Pearl doc in VC Lib, and I'll try to c copy that or, you know, whatever. Yeah, that would be nice if I actually did it in the right library, in the right directory. Um, let's look for the equal... Oh, so that's not going to go well. Pearl doc. That's also not going to go well. Um, there, item. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find one that has enough data that it actually does something. And apparently not. Okay, well, let's, let's just do this. Split array, array, and splits R into n plus n equal sized pieces plus one extra piece that is smaller. And that is actually both accurate and it's not a bad thing for it to do. So let me see if we can shorten, because always, whenever you want to, you know, canonize a function. Uh, length of the array. Um, do we use length of the array more than once? We do not. So there is a temptation here. Well, I'm not going to do it, though. There's a temptation here to replace len with length of array. Uh, so it's, I'm um, oh, sorry. Uh, so it's we we lose one variable. So st equals one. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna just tighten this up a little bit. But I like this function. I think this function can go uh, as is into bclib.jl. Not great documentation, but I don't think we really need great documentation here. Now let me get. I don't want to. I do want to keep this while loop separate. So maybe this is good. Um, okay, and it returns a list of array. Uh, I guess I'll make that more explicit here. Returns an array of array, but that actually should be kind of self-explanatory. Okay, so let's do the other one here. And the other one I think was. Oh God, that that is really really hard to see in this all this. Um, okay, so let's let's see if we have this function. This is going to take. Um, okay. This one we might want to want to do a little bit of work on. So what this does is it returns the polynomial that fits a list, a polynomial of given degree that fits a list, but the uh, the the domain is, is assumed to be minus one to one. The domain is remapped instead of being from one to the list index. Um, and I do want to return definitely the polynomial, uh, but it would also be nice to return uh, other stuff along with the polynomial. Um, in other words, sort of an object, like kind of like what I do in other places, actually. Whoa, why isn't this working? Oh, come on, don't tell me I'm not running screen. Why isn't screen running properly? Okay, well. Seriously? Wow. Okay, that I do need to fix. I think I... Whoa! What the hell did I just do? Please stand by. Okay, um... Oh. Because that X term was the, um... Okay, it is Pomodoro time. I'll be back in two and two minutes and two seconds. Sorry about that. I, I think I know what's wrong, but I need to need to fix it.
And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay, um... I guess this... Wait. Did I kill the SSH too? I, I, I rock if I did that. Alright. Okay. All right, let me get back to chat. Hopefully I haven't missed anything in chat. <laughs> That's a joke. All right, and I actually did try to change this to run Xemax instead of Emax. Um, and the problem might just be... Okay, well, one thing I can do is increase the font size. Huge. Just like Donald Trump's hands. Huge. Okay, let me see what's going on here. So I don't know why I'm running screen twice. That's bad. Um, screen minus ls should tell me, um, and the weird thing is saying it's attached, so I should be able to screen minus x into it, <laughs> attaching from inside the screen. Alright, let's go ahead and kill screen off here. Um, Now I hope we still have the SSH going, because we do. Let's see what, that's, why do we have two, that two of them might actually be okay. That looks fine. Okay, and by the way, I've decided that I actually do not want um, XEMAX running. It's, it's actually what I run on the other machine, but it's different, because I want to do like session saving and stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and just run Emacs. This will be fun. Um, yeah, this is a bit of a bit of a pickle that I'm in here, and not the Python pickle, not the Ruby pickle kind. Okay, um, and then let's go ahead and run Screen and see if it just kind of. Now this might just be because it's going off the, the bottom of the screen, which is different than uh, not showing up. So. Give me a second here. Da, 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 da. Nope. I flipped it. I'm just going to babble incoherently for a few seconds. Oh shit, is this really too long now? Did I? Okay, let's kill it again. Um, and it shouldn't have killed anything else. Good. Let's do a reset for the, uh, now can we get screen going? Seriously? What the fuck? Well, that worked. But why can't I do B... Oh, okay, that works too. BW should tell me what my list of screens is. Okay, hang on one second. What is my screen RC file looking like? Dude, BW should be telling me what my window I'm on. Yeah. And B control W should let's see if that works any better. Nope. God damn it. Um Now hopefully shit. Hopefully I can exit this without killing off Emacs. Good. Now let's get into another X term here. Mm, maybe. Okay, let me make this font. Oh, maybe I need to, well, okay, that I shouldn't have done. I probably should have made it huge first and then resized it. Um, okay, come on, 93rd times a charm. There we go. I, I need to look into that. And I think I have it on my doing list, but let me check real quick. Really fucked up VM, possibly semi-fixed. Uh, UTF is in, um, startup after SSHFS is fucked. I think that should be enough. Okay. Now, meanwhile, back to our street. I also needed to get some session stuff going for Emacs, but that's later. So I don't have to reopen everything all the time. Okay, what the hell was I doing? Oh yeah, so I was taking the README file. 
Um, I'm going to ignore the fact that there's additional data. And I'm also going to open up my uh, Julio library. Okay. Um, so we have this one nice function here, and we're trying to get this function, uh, but I'm trying to see if there's something more. Oh, yes. We're going to try to return an object here instead of, a, uh, instead of just the um, polynomial itself. What we really care about is not even the residuals, but the maximum residual. Uh, that that's what's gonna that's what's gonna we need to minimize. Um, so let's go ahead and look at objects in Julia. Though I get the feeling we did this earlier and it was non-productive. Um, oh. Um. Yeah. I don't even like object-orientedness, so. Um, you know what? Actually, we don't need that. We need uh, associative arrays. Oh, dictionaries. That's what we need. Which are associative arrays. Okay. Introducing them. Hello, how are you doing? Okay. Okay, so we should... Should. Um, and we'll test it before we do anything. Um... Um, now what we could do here is kind of clever. We could create a new dictionary. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oops. New dict. And we will be following along here in actual Julia. Or not. I mean, you know, whatever. I think this is the correct syntax. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, I think it's just this. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, there we go. So we just say dict equals dict. And then we probably drew kind of tempted now to just put this in as because just because I have a dictionary to play with now let's see if we can assign things in the dictionary like this um, hey I'm using like a real dictionary okay what can I do with a dict count keys max probe endel Why would I want the age of a dictionary? Okay, let's maybe do some. I think that is with UTF-8 on. Okay, maybe it's not. That didn't help any. Um, okay. Slots, keys, vowels. Okay. I'm guessing in my readme I did do some uh, adding to dictionaries, or no, I didn't. Oh, hang on, maybe I did. Um, I keep getting the feeling I do not actually do enough saving to a file because it's it's on video and I forget that um, it needs to also be in a file. Because um, I do remember doing things like color of cherry equals blah. but it's not in the history anymore. Um, okay. So how do I... Let's see. Can I just do this? That can't work. Um, okay, okay. We'll look at the actual instructions. So this is how you create a dictionary with three entries. Good deal. Um... <laughs> um great um uh, uh-huh okay uh 
Uh, nope, I don't need a dictionary remain sorted all the time. Um, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, okay. Word list for each line in F. There it is, pushbang. Um, wait, this doesn't actually, I think though that is correct actually. Um, so dict pushbang, uh, hello is a greeting. No, of course it doesn't. Okay, let's go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Aha! Wait. This is what I did, though. Okay. Is this just going to be weird with uh, quotation marks? That's, that's expected, because it is not defined. Okay, that's expected because I did a typo. Oh, shit. Oh, I was doing this. I'm an idiot. Okay. Yay. So now what I can do is say... Um, <laughs> dict of count is this thing, which we don't even really need this. Dict of count here. Array and degrees are input, so we don't really need them. Dict of poly is the polynomial itself. And then dict of um, residuals uh, is going to be... I think we, we did this. Oh, uh, yeah, we did this. Um, we mapped poly over... Okay, sorry. We mapped dict of poly... And I really need to fucking start knowing the difference between parentheses and brackets. And let's see, dict of residuals equals mapped dict of poly over count. So we basically apply the polynomial to everything in the domain. Subtract off the array. And then we, we want to just we're going to just return dict because that's that's what we want. But and then the question is, will this actually work? I don't know. Let's see if we can. Let's see if it even uh, compi oh, compiles. <laughs> let's see if it even. Well, actually, I think it is. That is right. It not compile necessarily, but let's see if it even um, takes it as valid. But that worked. Okay. All right. So now. Let me see if we still have Mars 2. Dot. Just for weirdness, we might. We do. Cool. Let's go ahead and load that in. That is a huge file. I don't know if that's really the best. Um, yep. I was trying to import, avoid importing too much stuff because it takes time, but of course that also means uh, not getting all the functionality I need. So not cool. Okay. So list normal list. Hang on. Okay. List two. I'm always paranoid and check my stream quality. And it doesn't really matter because the actual quality of the stream is very low. Um, let's take. Let's remember how to take. Fuck. Let's define DECS as being the array. Uh, first dex. I think that's just going to give me the first. Nope. Um, I know it's not head. <laughs> I said head. Can I just do that? Nice. Okay. Um, the problem is these numbers are very, very similar for each other. 
Alright, so let me go ahead and just be fucking retarded about it. Uh, no offense intended. So the array is going to be dex, and we'll go ahead and put a 4 3 polynomial on it see what we get. Okay. Once again, I am regretting my decision of not importing everything ahead of time. Now, the only problem here is that if this works, it's going to return a... Okay, no, it's not going to work, though. Um... Wow. Um... That should not be a problem. But hey. Alrighty. Let's just do this. Um, that should be small enough that it shouldn't be too much of a problem, and we'll make deg equal to 5, because I'm bored. Okay, so now let's just do this step by step. I think that one we already were okay with. Um... Tell, oh, sorry. Tell me what dict is equal to now. Should be... Oh, nice. They put it as a range. So that this is good so far. I realize that the semicolons are throwing me off. All right. Tell me what dict is now. Huh? 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 Polynomials. Polynomial. This is a fifth degree polynomial. That really should be... Ra oh, hang on. How wide is this freaking screen? It's way too wide. That's another problem I need to fix. But anyway, it is a fifth degree polynomial, so I'm happy about that. And now... Oh, I know, it's wrong. This has to be dict count. That is why that did not work. Okay. Um, redefine. Okay, what am I missing? Oh, Jesus Christ. We should just rename this stream, Watch Me Make Stupid Mistakes. But then no one would watch it. Yeah. Um, and here we're going to take uh, the first 100 elements of deck. And I'm being bored again, so we'll just third degree polynomial. Very nice. Very nice. Um... Functions are first class objects, that's nice. Um, so, I probably need to give that a name. Just temporarily, we'll call it this. Um, so, we're going to take the absolute value. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can't do that. Because it has to be map absolute value over that. And then, max, oop, 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 hang on, of that. Ooh, yeah. Okay, it is Pomodoro time. I'll be back in two and two, and I think we can start applying this.
Okay, we are almost back. And we are back. Okay, so this looks like a good function that I think we could, um, we could, uh, now the only problem here is uh, to be consistent with my um, JavaScript plan, I should really have it be sent in an object, uh, a dictionary. Um, and, and that reason is so the function could be expanded later on if necessary. So let's go ahead and call this an object, which is a dictionary. And then wherever we have ARR, this just becomes object ARR. This means we'll have to rewrite the other function as well, but that's, I'm okay with that. Uh, ARR, this does look uglier, but um, actually I actually think, I think um, Julia may have a with or using function for a dictionary. Uh, and then the other thing we were putting in there was the degree. So the degree is, oh, just the deg, sorry. The deg is going to be object deg. But now let's see if um, Julia, unlike bastards that pro kicked me out of a uh, an ERC channel for suggesting that it'd be nice to be able to use the variables of a hash as though they were local temporarily. Um, let's see if Julia has a uh, use um, using dictionary. I don't know if that's actually a thing, though. Um, fortunately, that's exactly going to be doing the wrong thing. Um, with dictionary. Um, but I want that special feature that says you can pretend like the dictionary variables are useful are local and, and useful, but, you know, whatever. Uh, creating a dictionary, blah, 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 blah. Adding elements. Whoa. What's the difference between those two? Um, okay. Fuck yourself. Um... Unfortunately, it does look like all of these are just using them directly, which is fine. Uh, but let's see if we have anything here again. Key type, merge, merge pairs. <sighs> so I'm looking for either the using keyword. Okay, so let's go back here into Julia. Maybe Julia knows something about this. Um, oh, using the module. Um, that's different from a dictionary. Uh, let's see if there's something called with. Um, all right, let's do it the hard way. Julia, use dictionary values as local, as local variables. Man, even I don't want to do that now. Um, okay, this is, this is, um, Although now and I'm kind of I kind of get the feeling I don't even want to do this now, but anyway, now that I've gotten into it, um, who was saying wonderful things about me? Wow, people just did not understand that question that I asked. But anyway, uh, blah 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 blah. Oh Jesus Christ! Okay. All right. I know R does it, which is why I'm kind of thinking that maybe there's a way to do it. Um. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So you can do it this way. Just seems like it's a really stupid thing to do, though. now that I think about it. Um, so screw it. Yeah, let's not even do it. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> Let's see if this still works. If this does work, I should save it to GitHub because I'm really bad about doing that. Uh, let's see, list to normal poly. What the hell was I doing? Oh yeah, I was saying T49 equals this. Gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna save that to GitHub before I forget. Okay, off it goes. And now we can go ahead and write up a little bit of a definition for it. List to normal poly. Um, given obj, given an array, obj array, and a degree, obj deg, um, return the polynomial of degree deg that best fits, um, the array treating the domain as negative one one inclusive which is in parentheses because technically when you put brackets it is inclusive okay so this is a good looking fucking function fu I can't speak but it is a good looking fucking function but now no 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 have to change my other one which is fine um let's see so this really just is very simple Call this obj. Um, return the polynomial of degree. Return the polynomial poly of degree. The residuals. Oh, and actually, there's one more thing I wanted to return. Um, the remapped domain, which is count. Um, and one more thing I wanted to return. And the maximum absolute residual, which I haven't even defined yet, but we're going to call it max res. Okay, and that's going to be um, something. Okay, we start with the residuals. We map the absolute value function over them. And then we take the maximum, which is the, the version for lists, that, and then return the whole thing. I am pretty happy with that. But let's go ahead and do it. Um, no badness has happened. Oh, wow. And that shouldn't have worked at all. Um... All right, I'm just going to go ahead and bite the bullet and import all these packages. One, two. What the hell? Why did my clock stop? That's really bad. I mean, it always it don't only if you, you know, stop for a second, but still, that's that's pretty bad. That suggests that uh, that either uh, the window manager isn't doing what it's supposed to do, or just Julia was taking up a long time. Okay, now let's go ahead and define this wonderful function. Okay. Now I should not be able to, um, I should not be able to call it like this. Um, that should fail. Awesome. Okay. I should be able to call it like this. Um, and if this works, I am going to put it in because it's actually kind of a clever way to show you don't actually have to instantiate a separate variable to do this. That should not have been that difficult. So the maximum, yeah, I mean, these errors are effectively zero because you can exactly approximate that's a line for one thing. Um, and I'm going to cheat a little bit and call this a sample usage of this function, but it's actually a sample usage of any function um, that uses this object-to-object -object method that I'm creating. It's not really an object, it's an associative array because I don't really like objects. 
All right, Mr. Smarty Pants. Let's see if you can do... Does this know about E? Does this know about E? Oh, there's a function called... Okay, there we go. Fuck. All right, so let's make a function of degree one. This should still actually give us an exact result because there's only three variables. There should be... Um... So for the first three, um, yeah, now the other thing is we at some point actually have to be able to plot these suckers. Um, well, actually, I think we can do that, right? We can say, okay, we, we will assign it a variable because <laughs> we're getting kind of silly now. So plot T15, 3, 15, 13, um, poly. Um, from minus one to one. And I mean plot plot. And, and take your time. I mean, it's not, not like we're in a rush or anything. La 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 oh, da -da -da -da. That's the Jeopardy theme. It's out also actually the back half of the minute waltz. Waltz. It's the last 30 seconds of the minute waltz. Okay, this is not supposed to take this long. Okay. And now... Um, oh shit, because I'm actually doing this. Um, so this would actually take... This would be exponent of 1, this would be exponent of 2, this would be... Because they're, they're, we've rescaled. Okay, nice. Um, not helpful, but nice. Now, if I, if I add another term here, if it, actually, let's just do x of 0, which happens to be 1, obviously. This should not be able to do this. We will have a, um, a max residual of uh, 0.76. Now, th would be, this would look a lot better if we could actually... Um, if we could actually match up the domains, which we have not done. But we can do this. Let's do this now. Let's be clever. So this will match, just because we happen to be using the same... Um, Okay, and this should work, and now I should be able to do both. I should be able to do this. Um, plot that. Uh, I'll see, I'm tempted now to see if you can do this. Plot two functions at once. Yeah, can't do that. Um, I don't think putting these in parentheses is going to help any, because I don't think parentheses have a meaning at this point. Well, I'm wrong. Well, I plotted the first one, not the second one, so that's not really helpful. But let's, okay, let's go back to the simple one. Do this. Good. And now, plots, plot, bang. X goes from minus 1 to 1. Okay. You can see there is a match. I got, got here to this fucking label. There's a match at exactly three points, as we as we expected. Now, how do we get rid of a plot correctly? If I do this, it gets all annoyed at me. But anyway, let's now do this with um, five points. It's not going to obviously be able to match. Uh, and I know you can't see the edge of the screen, which is my fault. But um, okay. So now, let's do this again. This is the plot of the approximation, and now we can also do the plot of the exponential function. Okay, so you can see it still touches... Wow, it still touches... The, well, it doesn't quite touch here. It's hard to see, but it doesn't. Um, but it doesn't touch at minus... It doesn't touch at minus 0.5 or 0.5. Uh, so that is the... Uh, now, what's kind of curious is I want to plot the... Um, The residuals are going to be very small, I hope. No, they're not that small, but yeah, there they are. On the value, ooh. Hang on. Sorry, the residuals should be point pl plotted against the, the same domain. So I should say this. There we go. So the residuals are very small. Um, just to be crazy now, we'll plot the, uh, the polynomial. On top of it, we will plot the uh, exponential function. And on top of that, we will plot the residuals, which 
I don't actually know what the hell I'm going to do. Yeah, I mean, I guess the residuals are showing you that now it's below here. It's a little bit, the blue line's a little bit above. Okay, I'm bored. Okay. So now we need to change split or, um, did I already fix it? Oh, no, I'm going to. Um, into object plus one extra piece that is smaller. If needed. I get the feeling if, the, if it's a perfect multiple, it's not going to happen. Returns an array of arrays. Okay. So we have this. We have length of obj r. Um, this is obj n. Um, Any place we're looking at uh, uh, R, we need to replace it with this. I think this syntax will work. I think you can do the, the selection afterwards. Okay, so, whoa, 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 your mama. Um, um, okay. And we're not going to be returning, we're going to be returning a... Uh, obj. Did I say dict in the other one? I probably did. I'm not being consistent. I'll be consistent. Dict equals dict. It's still an object. We're just going to call it by this variable name. Okay. Uh, length equals actually I think if you send me an array you know what the length is going to be. This one you might not know. Um, so dict uh, piece length Oh god, this is going to be a nightmare to use. Can I do this and get double assignment? And do I want to? Alright, let's try this. Sorry? Wow, you can do that. Um... How much do I hate myself? We'll find out after Pomodoro time, back in two and two. Okay, we are almost back, and we're back. Um, so I have decided to permanently defile myself by, by both defining the return value and at the same time assigning it to a simpler variable that I can use. Okay. Um, so this is... Um, So the, the thing we want here is the dict uh, array of arrays, which is probably not the best name for it, but whatever. Um, and then we just return the dict. Okay, I want ne one extra line there. Two extra lines there. Okay. So this is kind of clever because I get to use a variable name and also assign it to the uh, 
to the result. Well, is there anything else they would want out of this? And the length of each subarray. Now, the only bad thing about this is it doesn't tell you um, what the fields are that it returns in the in the object. So that's not great. Um, all right. So now, I don't think I've alias Julia yet, which is good. Okay. Uh, so now we want to do this. Or, or not, you know, whatever. Alright, what the hell's wrong here? Uh, is it load? Okay, hang on one second here. While we switch over to... Nothing! Okay, so there is no lo th there is a load function, I'm just not doing it right. Source? Is it source? No. <sighs> Fuck me. I know I can import, but that's not quite the same thing. Um... I can read... But I don't think that's what I want. Okay. Let's look at read and see if that's helpful. Uh, import. Maybe it's import. Um, it's probably not what I want, though. Right, well, let's see if that works. I don't think this is going to work because it's not a. It's not a. It's not the right kind of. Uh, object. Um, yeah, so that's that's not right. Um, let's see. Um, Julia load file, and like, this is really convincing me I need to do a lot better. Um, include. Include. And I will put that over here so we do remember it. And then I will stop Julia, restart Julia, do this. Wait forever. Hopefully I haven't messed up any of the functions, because it occurs to me that I have not um, actually tested to see if the syntax will... Whoa! Oh. Okay. And the reason that might have not given me the name of the first function is because I think it returns the last object that it evaluated. So that would be fine. So now let's try this. List to normal poly. Uh, and I don't think there's, I don't think question mark will tell me anything about it. Uh, it'll tell me probably that it is a um, function that I've defined. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's not helpful. Alright, so we need a dict, because that's the only way we're allowed to do things. Um, yeah, this is, this is the only weakness here, is that we need, um, we need to know what the what the names are for the things you're sending. ARR and degree. <coughs> so the ARR here will be um, I don't know. Something. One seven forty two five nineteen. And the degree will be of degree two. Let's you fit that. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, these are keys, so they are actually strings. I'm going to see if we can use either kinds of quotes and mix and match. I'm so silly. Okay, that's not what I... Oh, right, right, because single quotes are for characters, double quotes are for strings. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Okay. That is the best fit polynomial of degree 2. The residuals are that. The biggest residual, absolute value is 19.2. That does, that looks fine to me. That is some good looking shit there. 
Okay. And now, split array. Um, needs a dictionary that takes ARR and N. Okay. So ARR goes to. I'm going to be wacky and use the same the same array as before. And N goes to. Let's run it in two pieces. Um. Yes, because I forgot to change the signature. Uh, and that's because I'm an idiot. Hmm, <sighs> I think we're gonna have to reload. Anyway, uh, dict equals dict, dict piece length, dict R, oh, I do need to declare it up here, though, because if it's going to be a return value, even if it's going to be uh, an array in an existing uh, hash, I still have to do this, because I can't push to an empty array, shiny. That would be one of those things that would be really, really nice um, to have a language do, is if, if you're trying to create an array if you're trying to push to an array that doesn't exist inside of a hash, maybe it should create the array of one element for you. Or maybe not. I mean, that, that would seem like kind of a nice thing to do. Okay. Baby needs... Okay, now let's see. Now let's see what we can do. Let's see what this does. Dun, 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 dun. Piece length is two, and then... I don't know what the word... Oh, any means, I guess, the type is not contained. Oh, this is not good. This is not groovy. Where is my third array element? Panic! Okay. Oh, shit. Okay, so we start at one... This should actually say, well, st plus plan is less than, um, let. And just because I'm really obnoxious, I'm going to restart Julia. And if this works, I will save this too to get. Now, piece length in here could, in fact, be an integer. In fact, it is an integer. Um, come on, baby does not need a... That kind of went the wrong way, huh? I'm pretty sure I meant to say... I have no idea what I meant to say. Okay, this is not making me happy. Oh, there's a base case here if the uh, if the remaining piece, like it is here, is just one element long. Because, again, the indexes on a Julia array are one to the length. They are not, um, as they are in other uh, languages, zero to n minus one, zero to the length minus one. So that is where we are getting. I'm going to check something here. We have been going, oh, we're not, we haven't been going too long. Um... So let's do this. If this works, I am saving this. I just said that, and I don't actually ever do it. Bad. There we go. So the piece length is two. There's. This is kind of bad because the um, the the piece length and the number of full arrays is the same. Um, so actually, that might be something we want to put in there. Let me go ahead and save this to get first. Nice and saved. Okay. So actually, maybe we'll put that in there. Hang on. Um, uh, I mean, this... Ah, shit. 
Now this is where it gets kind of difficult to decide whether you want to do stuff like this or not. Uh, no, nope, you know what? We're not. It's just basically the length of the um, basically the length of the array of arrays that's returned, potentially minus one. Okay. So now let's split the array of one to a hundred into two pieces. Work for me. How about we split into three pieces now, huh? 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 Yep, that works. How about we split them seven pieces? Oh, God damn, it's fast. So each is 14, except, of course, the last one is going to be smaller, because it has to... Uh, well, 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 you think you're pretty smart. And, and you are, actually. Um... Alrighty, what if we say 1 to 10 in 7 pieces? Oh, that's not what's supposed to happen. Oh, actually, maybe... Ooh. Ooh. Actually, I didn't think about that case. So it could be more than one extra array. Um... So all we do is we don't change what the function, we just change the, uh, the, the documentation. Okay, so that's a pretty ugly case there. What if I want to split into 11 pieces? That should not freeze the program. Okay, that is bad. Uh, I'm not going to fix it, but it's, what if I say, and this is also going to be, yeah. So basically I shouldn't do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and BC get that because I made an important change. Um, I'm assuming I'm not going to use the function stupidly, but it is kind of bad that it doesn't uh, do the right thing when it's supposed to. And now let's go over to BC Interpolation, whose only line right now is this. Uh, I'm going to add a couple more lines to it from the README. And that is going to be Mars. Yeah, I really don't like reading from a temporary file. Although because we have a f uh, machine freeze, it's always going to be there. So what I'll do is I will allow this, but I will then say, um, I'm pretty sure that you can get away with single line comment. I think you can just do uh, comment. Um, yeah, okay, begin single line, that's fine. Um, don't load from temp file. Um, so I want to do this. And now what I want to do is define an alias for uh, Julia that lets me run it by loading these formula files, which is not going to be difficult because I say it's not going to be difficult. No. Um, we basically need to see the way we did it for maxim. There we are. Same for Julia. Julia, Julia, Julia. This, of course, might, is going to require a little bit of work to get right. Julia2 will take a file name as an argument. It will do blah, blah. We'll just call it juliastart.jl to be special. And the only thing I think here is going to have to change this a little bit. I don't think this is going to work. Uh, I think we need to say Julia temp juliastart.jl. But I think we need, I think we actually mentioned this in the readme, how to run it correctly. Um, no, of course we don't. We actually might mention that in README stream. Julia, space. Okay. Um, and I think this is, no, let me, I think this is the way we want to do it. Julia minus I. We don't necessarily need to load it onto all processors, whatever the hell that means. Okay, so now, first we do need to update our aliases, which in this case is from here. Beautiful. And now we need to say Julia2 tilde bc git Julia um, k 
Okay. And that actually I think is just a print. That's a result of the T. Um, so that's not, there's nothing wrong there. Um, the load time is a little bit ugly. Uh, but that we kind of expect that because we're loading in a lot of packages as well. And I'm tempted to use the use keyword so I can just say plot and sort of plot plot. Um, but let's save that. That's not a huge deal. We could also get rid of the banner, but maybe it's kind of nice to have the banner. So this, if this works, should give me a plot of the declinations. And I meant to say, of course, dex. So this should show me a sinusoidal plot of the, roughly speaking, 1 million points in index. DECS. Um, this will take a while. I hey, there it is. Um, now we're actually getting close to doing something that we actually want to do. Um, that I want to do. I don't know about you. Um, and that is, we now want to see if we can approximate um, um, if we can approximate this uh, these declinations, which I think are huge, right? I mean, huge. These are like billions of... okay. Oh! That's the wrong one. Okay, stand by. Um, I think it's Mars Scent that I was actually looking for. 329... that's not a lot. Uh, hang on. Where did this come from? Okay. So we're going from this time to this time per hour. No. Are there only that many hours in a in a? Huh. There's something wrong here. Pomodoro time back in two and two. And we're almost back. And I forgot that because I do not, um, because I don't save the state of the machine every night, this is actually the wrong file. So what we actually want is BC any dump, not two, uh, but just this. And this is just a test because the delta is too big. Okay, whoa. Seriously. Oh, okay, because this actually jumps over the 2100 boundary, uh, which is actually okay. So now, I really need to make this fucker thinner. Damn. Bad move on my part. Okay. It does say ID equals 499. So make this 3600. 
And this should do what we want. I'm going to go ahead and pipe it to less briefly. Okay. And now... Um, I'm going to save it to a to a file, but we're gonna do a little bit more here actually. Um, Mars per hour dot text, but um, so in fact we're not going to be reading from a um, from a, a temporary file. Let me go ahead and save this in Git so I can save that mistake that I made. That's that's how I roll, man. Okay. Um, so once this is done, and we can watch the progress over here. Um, oh, actually, I guess we're going to need to... Um, we're at 2083, by the way. Uh, we should be done by now, actually. And I think I don't care too much about that little error problem here, because it's. Uh, we're going to look at the last 50 lines here. Yeah, so we got as far as 2300, and it's not going to give us for 21, which is fine, but, but that's okay. Um, and the only value we actually want here is the last one, but we're still going to do something special. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and we probably, we need to trim it a little bit. Um, well the problem is the tail of this is going to be, yeah, all right, let's do this. Um, I am going to hand edit this, which is a terrible idea. Emacs is going to, Emacs is going to complain, it doesn't know what the, whoa. I thought it was going to complain. Okay. So head should be just all fine now. And tail. Now it's really easy to load this. Too easy. And in fact, it takes up a hell of a lot of space, too. So, um, we're going to be zip it. And we're going to see if we can open a pipe in Julia to read it. Because that is much harder. Um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there's a way to do that. Um, this is probably not what I mean. Oh, well, okay, hang on. Maybe it is what I mean. Um... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Wow, that's not what I want, though. Um, oh, hang on. Okay, we do not necessarily want this to be asynchronous, because we do need it. Um... I think I might need to be a little bit more specific with what I'm trying to do here. Um, because these are all examples of... Um, actually, hang on one second. Maybe it could natively read bzip data. Aha! This is not what we want, but this will do what we need. Um, close, but we're not using a... F what? Oh. So that's doing the uh, compression, uh, the decompression in Julia. Um... Wow. Okay. 
that's pretty cool. If there is a gzip open, is there? Is there a bzip open? No, bzip two? No. Nope. That's what zip does. That's not the kind of zip I'm looking for. Uh, zip, skip, main, edit, pair, plan, blue, 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 nothing that we were using. Um, pipe process output to Julia. There we go. Much easier. Oh, hang on. That's really nice. The backtick function. Um, that's not working though. So let's see what's going on. Oh. Okay, good, good, good. Um. Okay. Oops. My C equals date. Okay, and then. Oh, okay, that's kind of clever. Ooh, shininess. Okay. So I'm assuming I can just do this too if I wanted to. Yeah. Um, let's see, that's nice. Okay. Um Wow. So if this is correct, I'm going to definitely comment this out because we may need it. Um, we should be able to just say bzcat home user 2020. Oh, this is not, I mean, obviously we don't really want to put it, a file that's not in um, git, but um, for right now I'm okay with, this is actually a pretty big file to put into git for no reason. Um, so this the file name. Um, you pull that off, I'll be fucking impressed. Um, so I'm going to try it once just inside of the current Julia that we have. Um, oh, hang on. Uh, let's make sure Mars isn't defined. I bet you it is, though. No. Yes, it is defined. Link dex. Yeah, okay. Um, let's remove more. I wonder if we can remove more than one variable. Probably not. Uh, clear? This should break it because dex is no longer a uh, an array. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try this. I have grave doubts about this. I still have grave doubts about it, but that is really fucking cool that it didn't complain. I have grave doubts about this as well. Fuck, that did not look as good. Motherfucker, really? Wow. Okay, smartass, it's going to save. Holy fucking coley. Yep, that's it, all right. That's the data. Okay. That's pretty fucking impressive, actually. Um. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and BC get this. Oy vey. Um, oy from my mailbox. Nothing you guys can see. Okay. So now, I mean, the things we kind of want to do here is we're going to take um, split array 
I guess we're going to start assigning variables here. Split array, a dictionary that takes the array itself is going to be dex. Uh, and the n is going to be... It's 100 years worth of data here. I mean, I, I doubt we'll even be able to ma match 10 years at a time. I'm actually kind of curious to see what happens if we do this. I mean, this is an experiment. There's no way we're going to get 10 years worth of matching here. Um... Okay, I'm kind of curious to see if this even works. So in theory, T1552.4 is an array, and it should just... Um, Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, wait. My bad. That should just be... Fuck! Well! Fuck you. That's pretty fucking impressive, actually. Okay, so now, can we... We probably can't... In, th we're, there's no way we can interpolate that with a fourth degree polynomial. Uh, I mean, accurately. Um, let me see the Okay, so now let's say... List to normal poly. Um... The n value is going to be, uh, no, the degree value is going to be, let's say, we'll give it four degrees. Um, and the array itself is going to be T1552RR, uh, fourth element of that array, please. Let's see you do that, smarty pants. The sad thing is I think it's going to work fairly easily, in fact. Okay, so the maximum, uh, there's a huge error there. Um, and this is where we can plot, got to be a little bit careful here, but uh, we can plot T1554 poly from minus 1 to 1. Okay. And then we can plot the original data on top of it, which will be, uh, let's see. Count. Okay, that's fine. So it's going to be T154 count, because that is how we split it up from minus 1 to 1, um, versus... Um, I guess the count is actually universal to all the arrays, which kind of makes sense, except for maybe the last one. But let's pretend that's not a case right now. Um, okay, array, array. And which one are we using? Four. Fuck. Um... Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's T1552 that we had the array array. Sorry, that's what we want. Okay. Okay, so this is, I mean, kind of as you'd expect, a very poor approximation of this data because of the, uh, the, uh, the low degree of the polynomial. Um, obviously, we're not going to get it with this... Uh, this uh, this wide of a, of a domain. Um, but we're definitely building up to um, what we want to do. And ultimately what we want to do is we want to map list to normal poly of whatever degree we choose across the resulting arrays here. Um, And then find the ooh, the ma <laughs> the max of the max res, res functions. That's what's going to happen. Um, we can almost kind of do that here, actually. Um, you know what? I think I'm bad about not fuck. I didn't mean to actually stop the Emacs session. I think I need to be better about saving my. Um, See if that is correct, though. No. 
Uh, I do need to be better about saving all buffers. I probably need to throw a, get a timer in here or something. Um, because uh, sometimes I think it leaves uh, buffers unsaved, and of course when the machine shuts down, uh, that's bad. Or I need to find a better way of shutting down this machine that doesn't F with me like that. Okay, so we're, we're now getting to the point where we want to, um, come on, have some memory, no shit. Um, well, we're getting close to what we actually want to do, uh, which is find uh, uh, polynomials that fit well enough. Um, so actually, let me see how long I've been going now, because I kind of get the feeling I should probably stop. It's an hour and 51 minutes, let's go, we're going to skip the next Pomodoro, and we're going to go a little bit longer. Okay, so we'll say T1558 here is we're going to... Okay. Wow, this is going to be interesting. So T1552 RR is an array of arrays. Um, hopefully the question mark just means there's a there's a gap there because these arrays are not th this will just be 10 um, but the length of any th there we go that's fine that's exactly what we wanted um, okay so we're going to map something onto T1552 RR and what we're going to map is a function that takes x uh, which is the array, list to normal poly um, of a dictionary degree for array will be x, and that's the end of that, and that's, nope, nope, nope. So what this will do is basically on the little pieces of, of the, the smaller arrays, um, apply the list to normal poly function at degree 4. Boy, if this works, I'll be impressed. No. Um, and because I actually meant to, of course, put some quotation marks. Alright, it is Pomodoro time. I'm going to skip this, but I do plan to end in the next 20 minutes or so. So there we have it. Alrighty. This is actually not fucking bad. So these are the polynomials that uh, make up the uh, the approximations. If you split it into ten pieces, which is not which is not enough, obviously. Um, but now, can I yank out? I'm gonna definitely not uh, lose this one. Um, can we yank out of it? just the max res. That's really the only part we need is the maximum residual until we find the maximum residual we like, in which case we'll actually want everything. Um, key max res not found. Okay. Uh, that's okay. Now, it might be that I need to put parentheses around this. Oh, hang on. No, no, that's definitely bad. Wait, wait, wait. List to normal poly, blah, blah, blah. End list to normal poly. Max res of that. Uh, oh, then I don't need to end the map, do I? Because that actually just continues. There we go. Man, if this works. And there it is. Those are the residuals uh, if you do this at... Um, split it up in ten. Obviously these residuals are huge. Um, the only thing that kind of worries me is these residuals look bigger than the values themselves. But that's probably just a mistake on my part. Um, okay, no, that, that appears to be a really bad thing now. Um... I mean, there, there is room for residuals of up to 8, so it's not that impossible. So now what we're going to do is, first of all, indicate that this does work. 
No, we're going to split it into 100 years, I think. Um, still not going to work, by the way. But, you know what? We're going to split it into 1,000. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling frisky. Um, holy crap! That's insanely fast. And now we're going to do the same thing. This time we should see much lower residuals. Uh, and the only difference is literally this becomes T1602. And but this time we're going to see like a list of like a hundred, um, no, a thousand numbers. Okay. And maximum. That's not bad, actually. So that says that with this uh, splitting into a thousand polynomials um, of degree th four, our maximum error is about a thousandth of a degree. And I keep forgetting what our uh, maximum error is supposed to be. Um, it's this number here. Um, whoa, that's not that much bigger than our maximum number needs to be. Um, so a thousand polynomials might do it. Um, still kind well, that's 3,000 coefficients. No, 4,000 coefficients because a polynomial of degree 3 um, obviously will have uh, four coefficients. The, the third, second, first power, and the constant term. So 4,000 digits. And we're not quite there yet. But I mean, damn. Okay, so now what if we did this? Let's just go fucking nuts here. What if we did this with fifth degree polynomials? It, it, it should help, but not that much, is the expectation. Holy crap, does that do it? That does it. So if you use fifth degree polynomials, that's five, 6,000 coefficients. Uh, we can get 100 years of Mars. Um, done. I mean, obviously, we have to compare to the intra-hour um, the intra-hour uh, possibilities that it, it varies more than that, but this is not bad at all, actually. The, uh, the fact that with fifth degree polynomials, we can do a pretty good approximation position of Mars using only a thousand polynomials, but of course, of course, um, and this is where we're going to sort of uh, going to functionalize um, we kind of want to find the best combination of coefficients um, and splits. So we want to basically minimize um, degree plus one times number of pieces. That's that's what we want to do. Um, and then we could put that into our. Uh, we can get that into our. Uh, we can create that into JavaScript and. Um, I forget where I'm putting these things. No, that's not it. Um, I should have, actually, an example for the sun and even the moon, because I, I remember... No, not for the moon. Just for the sun. Um, unfortunately, I do not remember where that is. Oh, here it is. Um... And this is also in the GitHub pages, which is... Uh, so this is how this works. Um, min x, max x... Uh, yeah, I mean, this isn't short, but it's not that big either, actually, to be honest. Um, so this has 523 points of order 4, which means uh, 1, 2, whoa, 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 1... Mm, I think this is actually the interpolation order mi plus one, because th these are third-degree polynomials. Um, interval length, yeah, that's fine. Okay. And do I actually do it for the moon? I mean, there's just really no way I could see myself. Oh, right, I do it for the solar RA and the... Um, and I do it for the right ascension and the, uh, and the declaration. 
and um, doing it for the moon would be insane because the moon it moves very quickly and in a not great pattern oh my god I said that and now Wow. I can interpret the lunar declination, but I mean the um, interval length here, by the way, is 50, that's like seven and a, that's like, let's find out what that is. That's only a few hours. It's like not even a whole day. A whole day would be, um, whole day would be 86,400, 15 hours. So that, I do have to do it for only 15 hours there. And for the sun, I'm sure I did it for much, much longer than that. Yeah, ten, um, I think that's a week, but let me check. Yeah, seven days. Okay, I think we have, uh, I have done as much stupidity as I can do, uh, while streaming. We are over the two-hour mark once again. Thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.